Okay, we are going to start with the branch for task uh, presentation that we have scheduled for today. What I'm going to cover is the the basic functionalities and well, more than the functionality, the basic philosophy behind the branch for task branch, which is the the core philosophy we stick to in Plastic SEM. So, uh, well, I'm Pablo Santos from Kodi Software. And I'm going to start describing the Scrum cycle and where Plastic SEM fits in the whole picture. Basically, as you can see on the screen, uh, you can see the, 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 the basic Scrum cycle where you have a product backlog and then you have the deliverables and the meetings at the end of the, uh, of the iteration. We typically focus on this zone here, on this area here, right? We focus on the daily job that the developers do the developers perform once they have a clear set of tasks to work on that are no, most likely coming from the product backlog, right? So Plastic helps here, but as you're going to see, uh, what we do actually expands and goes goes beyond what you do on a on a daily basis and has a, a lot of impact in the rest of the aspects of the of the product and actually on on product management tasks. Well. First thing I'm going to do is uh, to describe the, the branch for task cycle. The branch for task cycle is very simple and you have the, the entire picture here on the screen. The first thing is for every entry in your sprint backlog, which are actually tasks and normally estimated in hours, or I, whether ideal hours or real hours, then you will get one of these tasks, one of these entries and they will become a task. So one of the central pieces if you want to implement branch for task is to have a, an issue tracking system. Whether it's an issue tracking system or a project, manage, project, project management system, but basically everything you're going to do on your code, on your project, should be a task. My recommendation is whether you go for Jira or Bookzilla or Mantis or one of these uh, sort of uh, tools. And then the point is that you will have a unique identifier for each of the tasks you're going to, to work on and each task is going to be assigned to a developer. Someone will have a clear understanding of what has to be done. And here is where everything actually changes. In Plastic SCM, what we actually recommend is that for every task you have on your issue tracking system, you'll be creating a new branch, right? It actually makes the big difference when you compare to other systems out there and other working patterns. Of course, you might be thinking now, okay, but it, it will mean you will have really a big number of branches, and that's true. The thing is, you, in order to implement branch per task, you will typically need a version control system with a strong branching, strong merging, and hopefully that's what we provide with Plastic SEM. Once the developer starts working on a branch, he will start doing check-ins. He, he will be able to do as many check-ins as he wants to on his on, on his branch and I'll be covering that later on. And then when he's ready, he will typically pass and run all the tests on each task, whether he has unit test, GUI test, uh, smoke, whatever. And then at, the, at a certain point in time, you will have a stack of finished tasks, right? And these are the tasks that an integrator with normally a release engineer or well, you know a developer on the team that will take care of this responsibility will be creating a new release. In order to create a release, he will merge all the branches that the people created, the team created before, and then we'll get them, them all merged, we'll get them all tested, and he will be creating a new release, which actually will be the base for the next cycle. And then the cycle goes on and on. My recommendation is always to, to have at least one release per week. So two in, in every sprint, if you are using a sprint of two weeks, but I will even go. I will even push farther, and having one release per day is is not a bad idea at all, right? It actually is very good and very complete. And we'll be discussing later on about the differences between uh, continuous integration and controlled integration. Why controlled? Well, let's think a little bit about how the integration process goes on a on a software project. You have a starting point. You have a finish point, and then the, the software evolves, evolves, and then it's it's integrated at the end. That's actually like this very simplistic picture. But what actually happens is something like that. If you delay the integration, then you'll have a big trouble. This is what is normally called is normally known as 
Big Bang integration. And it was the, the root of all the problems in many projects across the world, around the world. When they have, you know, a typical situation when everything is almost finished, you just need to get all the code integrated, but then the integration process takes forever. And then you have a big uh, delay on the project, and you have you run into a lot of problems, right? That's that's basically what we try to avoid using branch for task and also what is avoid uh, doing continuous integration. Actually, the big trouble, the big bang integration. Well, the solution is, uh, well, the rule of thumb here is when something hurts, try to do it more often until it doesn't hurt anymore, right? So the thing here is, okay, you, instead of just creating a single a final big bang integration try to integrate often and as often I mean the, the more often you do it the less likely it will become a delay right that's basically what we try to do with branch for task too okay now I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the difference between what's known as serial development and parallel development which is the basis of branch for task Serial development, in serial development, your development will look like what you have on screen right now. Basically, you'll see a line of changes. Each of the shapes here is a chain set. It's actually the same sort of rendering you see in the Plastic SEM Branch Explorer. Each of the changes is what we call a chain set or a commit in, in different SEM jargon, right? And actually, each time someone checks in, he will be creating a new change. If you're working on what we call serial development, suppose you have to fix a core back in a database query, then it's a chain set 10,474, okay? You have it, you check in because it's ready, then someone else fixes a type on the about form, then someone else goes and, and creates a new loading form. Well, everything is just serial. This change gets into the main line just after the previous one. The main line is just the branch you're seeing on screen, right? This is actually not parallel at all. It's not good for concurrency. It's not good for speeding up the work of your team. On the other hand, you have what we call true parallel development. You have the serial one on the left, and then you have the parallel one on the right. As you can see, now the, the, the points that you had before as individual chain sets are now branches. So the fix on the core database query is not restricted anymore. It's not constrained anymore to single check-in. You can do as many check-ins as you need, up to four in my example here. The type on the about form can be a very simple one, so you just need to check it in, and it's only one chain set. The, well, I also described a GDI resource leak, which is, is kind of common for Windows uh, developers. And then you have the new loading form, which is taking like uh, three check-ins. Well, the, the good thing here is that the version control system is not just a delivery mechanism for developers anymore. It actually turns, becomes a, a full productivity tool. You are not restricted to a check-in every two days when you're done. You are not restricted to a check-in once a week when you're done with your big task. You can actually check in almost as frequent as you save in your favorite ID, right? I wouldn't say every five seconds, but you know, you can check in very, very often. And that's actually a, a very interesting uh, productivity uh, boost for the team. Well, now I'm going to cover what we call the mainline pitfalls. When you're working just in a single branch, then you'll have different problems. The problems are, well, you won't have your code always under version control, and I'll explain why. You are not able to keep the main line pristine. You'll be shooting moving targets and then some others that I'll be just covering in the next slides. First one, code always under version control. If you're just using a single branch, then whether your code is in your workspace, in your machine, in your directory, or is in the repository, right? But there's no intermediate point. So if you use a branch for your own task, you can check in as often as you need. So, you check in, your code is under version control, your code is protected, and then you have like a security step, right? Like a security network protecting you for losing the code. The code is always under version control. The next one is that you'll never be shooting a moving target. And that's, uh, well, it's interesting how dramatic the title sounds. It's actually true, right? Suppose you created a baseline, a 
stable release in your project, which is called BL130, BL from Baseline. That's actually how we named the releases internally in Plastic SEM. Uh, okay, so it was released to a customer, and then at a certain point of time, you update your, your code, your, your working copy, to somewhere here. And the question will be, what here is, right? What is this point? It's not the stable release, it's just something in the middle. You completely avoid that with run for task because every branch, as you can see on the right, will be starting from a well-known stable, and the word, the word stable is very important, well-known stable release, right? And that's actually the big difference between the two modes of working. If you break something here, if a test stops passing, you know it's, uh, it's your issue, right? You know it's your fault. And it's not about pinpointing anyone about, uh, you know, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's guilty for, for breaking the, the change. It's actually that if something stops working when you're working your own branch, you know it's something you just modified. So it's very easy to go and locate it, right? On the other hand, on the left, it's, it's much more difficult because you are not sure who is breaking, who is breaking what. The next one, and that's one of my favorite ones, is uh, about breaking task dependencies. Well, look on the right, look on the left. You have several tasks. They are all they are all linked together, right? They are all linked together. So you're fixing the core database query, which is uh, very important to retrieve your customer and your system, is just checked in. So the next one, which is a typo on the about form, which is normally you know it's not, it's not a big deal but it's just checked in after the fix on the core. So it is never tested separately. You check it in and then it, you have a dependency with the other code. The code is tested together. And the same happens for the new loading form, which is actually linked to this one and so on. On the right, on the other hand, you are free to choose what goes into the next release. Everything is under control. You, you decide to have a release tomorrow, then you get two tasks. You get them into the release. And the next one will simply wait for next week or next day or wherever. The thing is, it gives you flexibility. It gives you a lot of flexibility to actually do what you what you need, right? To actually to actually get stable releases often and uh, and quickly, right? That actually gives you a lot of flexibility for to to the process. Well, also another one is about stopping back spreading. Okay, you're checking a bug, the one in on the one in red on the on the left, right? You're checking a bug. And then okay, so we'll have to fix it, but while it's not fixed, the build is broken on the main line. Anyone going, getting the code from the main line, doing changes will be affected by this bug. Which probably doesn't mean a bug in production, but can mean that the entire team is simply you know, slow down by a, by a bag. Probably you have like five or six people looking into something that is going to be fixed already by somebody in the team, but you know, it's just affected by that. When you're using branch for tasks, you get an extra opportunity to fix the issue before it hits the mainline. There's no, there's no magic involved. I mean, you can still break the mainline, but you're putting more opportunities for your QA team or for your testing system to actually, you know, avoid the, the bug to get into the mail. Okay, the next one is that we enforce uh, very strong best practices. And one of them is enforce baseline creation. It's very natural if you're using branch for task to create baseline. Basically, the cycle is the following. You create a branch, then you have several branches finished, then you merge them back. When you merge them back and you test, you have a new stable release. And we actually are able to, to, to enforce two things, right? You enforce visibility, and this actually is it's it's, it's deeply rooted into project management. You create a new release, so you have visibility, you have a, a fallback uh, mechanism. You, you can, you know, if you are on release 1.1, you can show to to the rest of the team, to to the to the upper manager uh, management, to the customers that you have a new release. Actually, it's, it's working software. It actually goes through all the principles in the Agile manifest and all the Agile principles, right? And then the other thing is that you actually cover yourself, right? Because if next week 
you are not able to make it or next day or next two days, you still have a stable release to work with, right, that you can probably put in production or something like that. You work in short iterations, you create working software in stable, continuous baselines. Okay, the next one covers a little bit about what we consider the future of continuous integration. Continuous integration is actually not against branching and merging, not at all. It's actually branching and merging, as we see, it is actually an evolution of continuous integration. If you take a look at this book, you have on the screen, Continuous Integration, at the end of the book, they cover an specific, mat, an specific subject, which is what is the, the future of continuous integration? And they say, okay, the problem with, with continuous integration right now is that if something breaks the build, the build is just broken, then you, you have to react, right? It's, react, it's, a, it's a reactive way of working. You first break the build, then you have to go and fix it. What's the solution? Well, the solution they propose is a little bit complex, right? And it's about, okay, let's create in all version control systems and in all CI systems something called a two-phase checking. So your code goes to the CI system, it gets test it get it gets tested somehow, and then only if the tests pass, then they'll make it into the into the mainline, right? And that's all about it. That's that's all it does, right? Well, the solution is that branch per task is already able to do that, right? It's already able to do that. You don't have to create a new mechanism like this two-phase check-in. You just need a good version control system capable of doing proper branching and proper merging. And that's all, basically. Okay, so the four rules to keep in mind when you're doing branch per task are the, following four, the following four ones. First of all, try to keep your mainline pristine. So try to keep it clean, try to keep it ready to be put in production. Second one, keep the features flowing, isolate changes in branches, each bug fix or new functionality will go to a new branch and you never stop development because you have a code freeze or something like that. The third one is common commit checking as often as you need. So every developer is able to use the version control to track their individual progress. And the last one is push the changes to the mainline only when the features has they have been completely tested. And this is, in a nutshell, the four rules that you have to keep in mind to implement successful branch for task. And well, this is basically the foundation of the branch for task cycle, the foundation of uh, the, the, the basic operations we do in Plastic SCM, and the goal that we have for this webinar webinar today. If you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to, to answer.